You are watching the Lazizi Review Show. Brought to you by Lazizi. You are watching the Sweetie Girl Production. It's like that. Snap, snap. You are watching the Sweetie Girl. You are watching the Sweetie Girl. You are. Let me stop. Well, welcome to that ZZ Review where we talk about shit. I want to talk about why, you know, you know the drill. You know how I do it. My show, my germs. I do it for me. I do it for you. Stay tuned. It's going to be a good show. That ZZ Review. So a lot of times on the Lazy ZZ Review, I get, you know, topic discussion ideas from you guys out there. And you want to talk about this, that, and the third. A lot of times, it's younger viewers. And you want to talk about, you want advice, you know, because you at school, you a freshman, or you almost finished high school, and you have high school problems. This episode is about bullying. Boom. Yes. It's about bullying. Um, because I think it's a topic to talk about with young people and older people as well. And these lads easy to tackle it. So here we go. I got my serious opinions about it, and we're going to discuss it. If you don't have this problem... Don't watch. If you don't feel like this is a problem in society, don't watch. But let me tell you something. It is. It's very bad. Okay? But for me, I feel like it's bad on the opposite direction. We're going to talk about it because I'm going to have serious, you know, opinions about it. Very different from what the propaganda that's all over, you know, the media, television, computer, what have you. So let's talk about it. Here we go. Now, I'm going to tell you there's a big problem with bullying. And m mostly, I'm going to say, we're developing a victimization nation. But all I'm trying to say is, everybody's a fucking victim now. I said it. I told you. And I'm going to tell you why. When I was growing up, you know, circa early 80s, you know, that's easy time. Yes. It was a hard knock life. It was little off and nanny. It was, it's a hard knock life for us. Yes, it was. Okay. I mean, we played in junkyards. Yeah, the junkyards to the eye could see. I mean, the Bronx was burnt to a crisp in the 70s, and it really was, yes, it was burnt toast. And it was nothing but a junkyard. The whole world was abandoned, junkyard looking. It looked like something out of a movie. It really was. It was in movies. I mean, it, but it looked like a set of, like, when you blow bombs and, you know, explosions and debris and people don't live there anymore. They, they're dead or you know, dead or gone or whatever, right? And it looked like a, a war movie. That's what it, the Bronx looked like. It was horrendous, okay? And when you grew up there, you played in the junkyard. That's what you did. You played in the junkyard, you know, and you had an adventure, and it was a great adventure. And I think we had a better childhood sometimes than I think these kids are having because we had an adventure, and yes. I mean, and there was so many, you know, rocks to throw and forts to build, and, and you jumping out of abandoned buildings and onto, you know, abandoned mattresses. It really happened, yes, it did. And you might have went to community pool, and it was all nasty and dirty and shitty, and it was crappy, and, and life was, uh, but it was fantastic. You know, we made the best of it. You know that. We made the best of it. It was South Bronx. That's it, right? So you made the best of it. And we grew up, you know, with a, dealing with a lot of poor people at the time. It was a very poor, educated time. It was poor for the mind. It was poor for the spirit. And it was poor for the kids, right? So, you know, you know there was going to be bullying is what I'm getting at. So I'm going somewhere with it, all right? Just bear with me. You know there was serious bullying at the time. It was a, a hard time. And kids didn't have shit for real, for real. I mean, everybody had a dirty T-shirt. That's what the boys looked like. They all had these dirty little T-shirts. And some kids couldn't even afford haircuts. So it was like, and yes, and everybody was a hot mess, right? And we managed. And if anybody had a, a mother or a father that worked, well, you know, you was the rich kid. I mean, I'm not making this shit up. It's true. It happened. And then a lot of times, the pool for, for us was the pump. You know, it was the pump, and we was having fun by fun. We was throwing ourselves in there in the summer, and we were getting wet. And that was life. And if you did go to the beach, and you had a bathing suit, child, you was fierce, because most people didn't even have bathing suits. I mean, it was just, and that's just nothing. That was just a hard time. And I'm telling you this to tell you this. You know kids were bullying each other left and right back then. You know it was happening. It was happening on a regular. And back then, since the struggle was so real, you know, money problems for everybody, nobody has shit, some kids were going to bully you, you know, it's, it's like that, it's, if society is, it's really like that, when you're dealing in a ghetto, ghetto issues, and kids are like, the, the education system was really, really bad, especially back then, I mean, they taught you how to conform and that's it, and if you had any type of individuality, you were the fucking freak and that's it, and you know, and no, 
not through Facebook and the internet. You an individual. You're freaking awesome. And these kids are way different from when we was growing up. I mean, they're told on a regular basis, you're beautiful and you're fantastic. Do it. You know, we was didn't have none of that shit. It was you a fucking freak. Shut the fuck up and sit down and listen to your elders and that's it. I'll fuck you up and that's it. Yeah, that ha yes. And you, you a child, you were seen, not heard. Be quiet. Poof, be quiet. We don't want to hear from you. You a child, right? So it was that. That was our time. Make your toys. A lot of them make your toys. Get if you found a broken toy in the junkyard, honey, you was fierce. Okay, and that, yes, that happened. That happened to us too. And we were doing well. You know, my mother worked, so imagine. And we were still happy to find an old broken ball or broken shit in the garbage, because it was fun. It was fun to find shit. You know what I'm saying? Now, like I said earlier, I'm going somewhere with this, and this is to say all this shit is to say this. We didn't kill ourselves on a regular basis because somebody bullied you. And bullying was fucking boom, 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 heavy, heavy, heavy. We had some heavy hitters. We were, it was a ghetto, ghetto ass, horrible time, you know, for growing up as a kid back then. You had nothing. It was also a wonderful time, I guess, for back then because, you know, we, you know, necessity is the mother of all invention. I'm pretty sure you heard that. And it really, really is. You don't have shit, you make shit. And your imagination was kaboom, boom, boom, plow. It was fierce right so you had this amazing imagination back then these kids you don't see it in them you just don't i mean if they don't have their contraptions they can't think and that's the way it is we didn't have you know we didn't have to rely on that so we were using our noggin yes and because we were using our brain and our imagination i guess we had the skills and the know-how and the ability to handle bullying on a you know on a better level because we loved our life and we wasn't about to give it up for nobody right and, and kids did kill themselves i'm not saying that they didn't but usually it would be a gay thing it'd be like when you heard about it it because he was gay and he wasn't accepted in his family or in his um community and being gay was a bloody sin when i was growing up it really was it was a hard time for gays it is nothing like that now there was no gay shows on television for instance the most Thing you would have thought of being gay maybe Felix Unger or something and then it wasn't said that he was gay it said that he was married but he had those feminine ways you know and it was like little things on television one of the Smurfs he was kind of gay vanity Smurf he was like eh, vanity Smurf and, and you kind of like kind of thought something funny about him but gay was not on television in no way shape or form let me tell you it wasn't and if it was it was like a funny guy on the show talking like this and you kind of know you know he's funny and so it was he still had a wife you know what I'm saying was, yes well anyway that's you over there right and that's probably why, if anybody did kill themselves, it was a gay kid. It wasn't really on a regular that some little girl, some little boy was just killed. They said, hang themselves in the closet. You hear a lot of this. Now, the reason why I'm going to talk about this, I'm going to say it's a victimization nation. It just it makes sense to me because you're being victimized by yourself. You allowing it. This is about bullying because I think that bullying is a problem. I think it's a problem of propaganda that's pumped out there by society you know by the media mostly the media because that's that's what it wants to depict it wants to be society looking like it's sucking its thumb and it doesn't know how to handle or cope with bullying and we need to figure that something out you need to teach your kids right how to stand up for themselves when i was a kid if a kid got bullied he learned how to box he learned how to fight by his big brothers or something and he fought back he did or he got his ass kicked every day until he did today these kids are taught like Everybody's special and everybody's fantastic and da 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 da. So when they feel like they don't have a coping skill, they feel like, well, I should just end it all. Recently on Facebook, I saw on the reporter that um, some young kid, he killed himself. But before that, he was an activist against bullying, right? So then he killed himself. And in the letter he wrote, he said, you guys are right. I am a piece of shit. I don't matter or whatever. So to that effect, I shouldn't be alive. What the fuck, yo? And then his mother is out there saying, you know, it started when he was little, and then he had a little lunchbox, and they made fun of it. No, Miss Honey. They made fun of it, and you should have taught him how to fight back. That's it. You just told him how to stand up for himself, how to stand straight. That's number one. I'm going to tell you why, how bullying kind of occurs. It, it occurs through your body language, through the way you depict yourself, the way you perceive yourself to others, you know, well, whatever. You know, the way you show yourself, the way you present yourself, let's say. When you go into the schoolyard and you all like this, look, first of all, you're closing in your body language when you like this. You're a donut, they're going to eat you. Yes. If you listen to anything I'm saying at all ever, listen to this because this is true. Body language is an amazing thing and we all know how to read it. We know that shit from birth, basically, and this is actual factual 
science. This is not fake. This is not some potential. Like I always say, this is real shit. Now you're gonna go into the schoolyard. You're gonna go walk into the school. You walk into the motherfucking place like you own the place. You like yes. You know you like hello and talk to people. Don't be hiding, shriveling up in the corner. I was very shy, and I got picked on every now and then, and then I bust somebody's ass because. That's how they found out I don't fuck well. You know what I'm saying? Because I was shy, but I was no punk. And yeah, I didn't like to fight. I didn't like to fight. I didn't even like to talk. Unless I was talking to my friends and my family at home, I didn't really want to talk to you. And if you talk to me, I was like, yes, I got a friend and shit. But before that, it wasn't going to be me doing it first. And I regret that. But that's just the way it was. Nobody was telling me the ways like I'm telling you right now. Throw yourself in there, right? And you confidence, let me tell you, if nothing you listen to, confidence will save your life. It will. You have to have it. And, it. and fake it until you feel it. Trust me. Fake it until you believe it. You walk in there with your head held high. Somebody asks you a question. You enunciate properly. You speak loud. you like, yeah, so hi. Hi. Even if you faking. I do this shit to this day. I'm very shy. And I still go, hi. You know, faking it. Yes, darling. I fake it until I feel it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I'm still got my shy moments. But I don't, I don't wither away and die for nobody. And you shouldn't either. Let me tell you something. When the sperm hit the egg, kaboom, you was born. You're fierce. You made it. Enjoy your life. Right? It's yours to enjoy it. Don't ever sit back and say, well, um, I owe somebody an apology for living. And the, and then, yes, you're saying that when you walk in and you sit in like, you know, you 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 collapse your, your body inwards. Like, you have to hide yourself. People with confidence tend to not attract that type of negative energy because people bullies. And this is a true fact. Bullies are people that are weak. Weak in the mind and the spirit. And this is why they look for something. They look for something to fuck with. Because they feel like shit. And you heard this over and over again. But it is more true than you would like to understand. Let me tell you, it is very true. When you are bullying, I've even bullied. I bullied my cousins when I was younger. And it was because they were so much younger than me. And there was a lot of reasons behind it. All stupid. All um, reasons of immaturity in the spirit. As you get older and you're more confident and you get to understand yourself and you get to understand empathy and feeling for someone in yourself, you don't want to do that. Now, you can't teach these kids that when you're the one being bullied, but you can't stand your ground and you can stand up for yourself and that's what you need to do. And no matter what, at the end of the day, they're going to goof you. You know, they're going to make fun of you because you was a target. But once you start showing them I'm not a target anymore, they're going to back off little by little because bullies don't like to be confronted because they're scared to get hit. That's why they bully. That's a fact. They're full of shit. They're worth nothing, you know, when they're like that. Sometimes they get older, they get wiser, and they become these beautiful people that you wouldn't even imagine they ever were like that. And I've seen this over and over again, even with myself. Yes. And then, you know, you're a better person. But until then, you're a dick. That's it. Deal with it. I told you. You're a bully. You're shit. That's it. Because a bully is a person with low self esteem image you know they have a deep low self-esteem they probably going through something at home whatever whatever that's their problem they're their business you don't gotta apologize though for being alive but you do you are gonna have to fight for being a punk because you're walking around and you collapsing your body language and you trying real hard to be invisible guess what you're gonna have to fight so fight back that's it that's what, what this is about this is about fighting back don't be a victim don't play the victim role it's it's ugly and it stinks and you're not here to be saying sorry for being alive. If somebody comes up and they want to make fun of your lunchbox or your hair or whatever or how you look or whatever, whatever, and they're getting this vibe off of you that you're the one, you punch them square in their face or you tell them, get out of my face because it's about to go down. That's it. And let me tell you something. At the end of the day, you know, yeah, you might get fucked up. You might get fucked up or whatever, but let me tell you something. I've seen a lot of little bad boys with my time and one of them, Always stood out to me because he said one thing that was fantastic. He said, out of all the times I got jumped, you know, I felt like I won every fight because I fought back. And even though we were kids and we were little chicken heads, that always, you know, resonated with me. And it resonates with me to this day. He grew up to be very successful in life. He really did. And he's just shout out, boo. You know who you are, right? So whatever. But he grew up to be very successful in life. And he could attribute one of those reasons for him standing his ground and having a backbone. And that's what you need to have, a backbone. It's that simple. And that's what this show's about. Now I ran way far with this one. Went a little long. But like I always say, click like. Don't forget, rate, comment, subscribe. I'm here for you. Yes. And thanks for watching my show. Bye-bye. See you next time.